Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, brother. God bless you, sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, this is God's servant, Prophet Ben Ojedabo, and today I'm here uh, to release and to speak the word of God and release the spirit and power upon your life as you receive the word and to receive, release his light, that light that gives understanding, that gives revelation, that brings forth teasel. I say receive it as you receive the word of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father Most High, Yahweh Elohim El Shaddai, in the name of the Lord, Yahushua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ the Lord, Amen, Hallelujah, 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 Amen. Today, I want to teach on God's Word today, and once more, my name is Prophet Ben Ojinabo, aka Man of Fire, aka, also known as God's Battle Axe. And uh, by the grace of God, God has been using me to touch lives of world over. Many lives have been changed, many lives have been transformed by the hearing of God's word, by the preaching of his word. Souls have been saved by the utterance and the prophetic decrees from my mouth. Through this power and grace, healings, breakthroughs, turnarounds, solutions, dramatic change for glory, success, prosperity has come upon God's uh, children's life. The world over, not just in Lagos, Nigeria, but all over Nigeria, in Canada, in Germany, in France, in Spain, in the UK, in the United States of America, in New Zealand, in Australia, in Saudi Arabia, the power of God has been touching lives through this medium and through these prophets. Uh, <laughs> I'm just full of God's, you know. <laughs> Joy on the inside, knowing this is taking place in the lives of God's children as I call upon Him, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. The doer of all the miracles, receive all the glory in Jesus' name. And the Lord said, I should tell you that it is your time for a change, it is your time for a miracle as you receive God's word, it is your time for breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Reasons for unanswered prayers. Seven reasons for an answered prayers. Seven reasons for an answered prayers. May God bless you as you receive His word in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, key number one, reason number one for an answered prayers is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. It's one of the strongest, uh, strongest reasons why people, people's prayers are made with unforgiveness. And so it's so difficult for their prayers to come before the Father. Hallelujah. When your heart is filled with unforgiveness, your prayers, they wallow, in sh they go nowhere. They hardly rise up to the heavens above before the Father. They hardly rise up before the Father in heaven, because the prayers are stained, they are polluted by sin, the sin called unforgiveness. And we want to look at the book of Matthew 6, 14 and 15. Look at Matthew 6, 
14 and 15. Matthew 6, 14 and 15. And this is the word of God. Blessed be the word of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord, says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, if you forgive men sins against you, if you forgive men their trespasses, my God. And verse 15 says, Let me take it from verse 14 again. It says, For if you forgive men, okay, that's where I am. From verse 14 it says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. That's where I'm going. If you forgive men their trespasses against you, their faults against you, their sin against you, so then your heavenly Father will also, well, you know, forgive you. He will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, their sins against you, their sins against you, Neither will your heavenly Father forgive you. So this is clear. Very clear. It's a very clear statement. It's not in parables. It's a very clear statement from the Lord. If you forgive men, there's trespasses against you, their faults against you, their sins against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive men, their sins and faults against you, your sin as well will retain and your prayers become soiled by the sin of unforgiveness. And so you will get no answers to your prayers. Many believers are still having these issues. They find it so difficult to forgive. No matter how the sin or what the sin is that any man commits against you, if you're remorseful and, you know, the Lord commands you to forgive. You just have to forgive. If you fail to forgive, you're holding yourself down. Sin holds you back. Unforgiveness, the sin of unforgiveness holds you back. You, you remain in the same spot with, you, uh, with, with the, the one that committed the sin. Both of you remain in the same spot. The one that committed the sin and the one who refused to forgive are both sinners before the eyes of the Lord. Wow, some people don't like to hear this, but this is just the word of God, and that's the truth, and only the truth can set you free. Hallelujah. If you're a believer, you're a child of God, and your heart is filled with sin, the sin of unforgiveness. You have vowed not to forgive somebody for what they did to you. Uh, you have vowed not to forgive your friend, your, your, your in-law, your brother, your sister, your colleague, whatever that person may be, or a sister in the Lord. You have vowed, oh, I swear to God I will never forgive you. In fact, that act of swearing to God is a ticket to the lake of fire. <laughs> it's a ticket to the lake of fire. A believer should never ever say so. I swear to God I will never forgive you. Hey, that means you just involved God and told God never to forgive you your own sin. May God show you mercy and help you to correct your wrong and so that you can receive the message of God and forgiveness in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Point number two. Some people think it's just about faith. When you don't have faith, you know, that's why your prayers are not answered. That's a big lie. You can have faith at times and your prayers don't get answered because certain things are wrong with your, your, your life. Sin. Like unforgiveness I just talked about. So let's go to point number two. Faithlessness. Remember, this is seven reasons for unanswered prayers. Hmm. Faithlessness. James 1 verse 5 and 8. Can we just go there? I want to read it for you to see. James 1 verse 5 and to 8. James 5, 1 verse 5 to 8. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So we want to look at the book of James. And I said, James what? James 1, James what? Mm-hmm. Verse 5. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, it says, if any of you, anyone, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, 
and it will be given to him. He didn't stop there. He's still going. But let him act in faith. So he's saying that if any of you lack blessings, lack healing, lack solution, lack breakthrough, lack anything, it's the same thing. Just replace the word wisdom here with that thing you are praying to God for. Is it a miracle job? Is it your permanent a resident card? Is it that contract? Is it that new job? Is it a higher pay? Is it a promotion? Is it a healing? Is it that turnaround? That end to that visual sight in your life? Is it that miracle marriage? Name them. That thing you're asking God for. So in this scripture, James 1 verse 5, replace the word wisdom there with that thing you're looking for. And so you get the same thing. Hallelujah. You see, let him act in faith. If any of you lack wisdom, if any of you lack healing, if any of you lack breakthrough, if any of you lack a job, if any of you lack healing, if you know, any of you lack, you know, promotion, you know, permanent resident cards, visa, name them, contracts, a miracle job, name them, breakthrough, name them, deliverance, name them. So if any of you lack these things, wisdom, all these things, so let him acts of God, acts of Yahweh Elohim, of glory, the all benevolent God, the almighty God, who gives to all liberally. He said, God gives liberally these things, freely overflowing these things. He gives to us. He gives to those who believe in Him. Believes in Him. Who gives to all liberally and without reproach. He doesn't add reproach to these blessings He brings to you. It is only Satan that can give you one blessing and add reproach. He gives you money and it gives you diseases or problems or shame. To go along with the money and make that money he gave you to become useless before you. That's Satan for you. That's demons for you, but not God. So God gives you good things liberally and without any form of reproach, reproach. And it will be given to him. See, but let him act in faith with, with no doubting. This is the problem here. This is the condition. You see, there is a condition for you to receive. Answers your prayer. And what is that condition? I first talked about forgiveness. You have to forgive people so that God can forgive you, so that your prayers uh, can go before God. Because if you don't forgive people, their sins against you, their trespasses against you, it's a sin of unforgiveness. And Isaiah 59 verse 1 explains that to you. That the reason why it is not that God's hands are too short to help you, or His ears are, are there for whatever not to hear you, but it's because of your sin. Isaiah 59. And so the sin of un un unforgiveness can cut short your prayers and stop you from receiving answers from God. So now move on to faith. And we're talking about faith and this is James 1 verse 5. James 1 5 and 6. And what does it say? It says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you can put whatever you're looking for right there. They let him ask of God who gives to us to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him but let him act in faith with no doubting for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind and we go down to verse 7 actually so for let not that man let not that woman let not that person suppose that he or she will receive anything from the lord verse 8 now say for he or she is a double-minded person a double-minded man Unstable in all his way. Can you see that? So we'll take it up down to verse number 8. James 1 verse 5 down to number 8. It said you cannot receive anything. Even when you pray and pray and pray unto God. You cannot receive anything from God. If there's an element of doubt in your heart. <laughs> Concerning those things you prayed for. You see, what you don't know and what many don't know is that when we doubt God, we are insulting the monarch of the universe. Doubt is an insult to God. In other words, you're asking God to, to make a way for you for you to get a job. And then you are doubting in your heart. Satan moved you and then you began to doubt God. Action speaks louder than words or voice. That action, that act of doubting, 
speaks so loud before the Almighty as an insult that he is or may not be able to perform that trivial miracle, that little miracle, that insignificant miracle. Rather, the, the words I'm looking for rather is the infinitesimal, a very tiny miracle. The one who created the entire universe, billions and billions and billions of planets and stars and suns and moons, and he controls them all and he created mighty angelic beings. Oh my God. The entire earth is like a grain of dots, a grain of sand standing in the air. The entire earth is like what a grain of sand standing, suspended in the air. In the entire air around the earth, for example. And there are other bigger planets than the earth. Millions and billions of them all over the world. And the Lord is the one that created these things, perfects them, rules and prevails over them, causes things to happen in them. And now here goes you, you ants, you little fragments, you ants on that little grain of sand, you dot, oh my God. Accent if. Can he really, can, am I really sure this is going to happen? You have already insulted God. And that prayer is rubbished by that doubt. And this is why we are many Christians, where many believers' prayers come to an end. Many believers' prayers end right where they began. <laughs> when they began praying, the solution or answer to that prayer ends right there because of doubt. And Satan knows this so well. And that is why when you begin to pray, and after you pray, you see Satan will do things. He will try to speak to you. He will try to send his demon to come towards you and speak to you. So you begin to hear the voices of demons speaking to you, asking you questions, questioning what God has said, questioning and poking at your faith so that you can doubt. And when you doubt, you agree with him. And when you agree with him, you walk with him. And when you agree with him in that kind of words that challenges your faith in God and what God can do, if God can do that miracle for you, perform the miracle for you, when you agree with such kind of doubts, you may not really know that you are agreeing with demons, but that's what you're actually doing. You agree with demons. You agree with Satan. And the Bible says, can two walk together except they be agreed? So when you do this, you disagree with God and you agree with Satan. You agree with the demon he has sent you away. And then you lose your miracle. You by yourself have stopped your miracle. <laughs> you see, Satan is not a stupid being. Satan was a wise spirit in heaven. The Bible says he was perfect in wisdom. The only reason why he fell was because he allowed it. He allowed, rather, you know, he's, uh, I want to say, allowed and crowded together. And <laughs> that's why I said that. Now, he allowed his splendor. To crowd, you know, his, his, his wisdom, his splendor, his glory crowded his, his wisdom. That was a problem that Satan had. But to say he is stupid, no, he's wise. He is not all wise. God is the only all wise, omniscient one. But he is not stupid. And that's why he was able to trick Adam and Eve out of their destiny. He came to bring a divine restoration.